what's up everyone I gotta check my bun I feel like the art of like the ballet bun is weirdly hard <laughs> it's got to be just right if it's too small it's too small if it's too wide it's too wide it's got to be like that medium I think I got it <laughs> we'll see anyway uh what's up I just feel like getting ready today with you guys and chatting about life, whatever. I've got my little makeup bag full of goodies here. I literally just kind of shot my stash and grabbed some new things from the drugstore. I don't think that I've like actually tried on camera. So we'll do some of that and then just some old favorites, some new stuff, etc. And then a few things I just really hadn't used in a while. So we're going to start with the VDL Lumi Layer Primer. I love this stuff. I heard about it originally from Dana Ann here on YouTube. I love her. I feel like she's one of those YouTubers that will say something so weird and off the wall. Like she'll try to describe like a scent of something or like the way something feels and she'll compare it to the most off the wall weird thing. And it always makes me laugh out loud. She, I wish I knew her in real life. Like she's just one of those people anyway. But this is such a cool primer because it's almost like iridescent. I can't explain, but it's not glittery or anything. It's just, it's a really good base and I forget that I have this. It's really good. Also fun shout out. These earrings I'm wearing are like these teeny tiny little ones with like this little star. And I, I keep seeing a more expensive version of this online and I always buy it and like want it, but I haven't bought it yet. And then I found this pack at Target. So it had the ones I'm wearing and then these two little ones. So I'm like, that's so cute. So I can link this below if you're curious about it. I feel like, you know, Target earrings, they'll usually last, I mean, they eventually turn, but they'll usually last me like, two years, give or take. All right, so one of the things uh, new that I wanted to try is the number seven Restore and Renew Serum Foundation. So I have tried this once. I wasn't really sure how I felt about it, to be honest. This is one that I'd put too much underneath it and I feel like it just ended up pilling up and looking weird and I literally wiped it all off and started over. So I'm hoping the second time around, I like it a little bit more. My SPF I put on way earlier this morning. So I'm hoping that by just doing one thin layer of a primer that this will look better. This is another thing I bought at Target. So if you're buying those earrings, if this is any good, you might wanna add this to your cart too. Might not be any good, we're gonna see. So I figured I'd kinda of give you a little life update here while we're doing this. This definitely does not have like super high coverage. I mean, it's a serum foundation, but it feels really lightweight, I will say that. So a little life update, Pinocchio. <sighs> He's wide up there laying down. Pinocchio is my dog. He's gonna be seven this year. Gosh, that seems insane. We've got him shortly after we got married in 2015. I gotta change into stretchier pants. I am 35 weeks pregnant and these are not, they're not cutting it. <laughs> so much better. I went into full PJ pants. All right, so update on Pinocchio because I have gotten some questions. I'd mentioned recently that he was having some issues with his back leg. And if you recall, a few years ago, he had some issues and we took him to the ER. He was just like limping and he would yelp every once in a while when he would, you know, try to do the stairs, like going upstairs. So we'd taken him to an ER vet because it was like after hours, on the weekend, like why does everything, <laughs> everything that could go wrong with like a kid or a dog or a pet, whatever, always goes wrong on the weekend after hours. Like. <laughs> So you're like, well, we either do nothing or we go to the ER. Like, which one do we want to gamble with? So we took him to an emergency vet. And at that point, they were like, he might have just injured something. But they went like straight to the extreme. And they were like, or he has invertebral disc disease, which is common in like long backed dogs. And he might need surgery. I'm like, what? So I don't remember how that ended up. Eventually he just got better and so we moved on and we didn't end up doing any kind of surgery. I don't remember if they did x-rays then or whatever. So anyway, fast forward two more years. Now he, the other day was like walking underneath our coffee table, trying to steal food because that is the beagle way of life. And he's just scouring for crumbs on the floor beneath our feet. And he just like yelped out in pain. And beagles are very dramatic dogs. Like they're the kind of dog that will like it sounds like a grown human like screaming it's ridiculous so it's hard to decipher when it's like really really bad it's like the boy who cried wolf or if it's just like a minor inconvenience and he's being dramatic you know so we give it a few days we we kind of make him rest we don't take him on a bunch of walks or anything and he seems to be okay and he's you know going a little slower but he seemed to be kind of getting better but then one day, maybe like three or four days later, he was trying to go up one singular step and just yelped out in pain. And he was like laying in weird places in our house. And when dogs do that kind of weird thing, it's just, it alarms you because it's so, you know it's abnormal. Like he'd be laying in our downstairs half bath 
on the rug in there alone. He's never done that, but I think he wanted to lay on hard floor and he want, you know what I mean? Like I think it felt better, but he wanted it to be on a rug. So he was still a little comfy. Like it was just bizarre. So that's when we decided, okay, we're taking him in. So we took him to our normal vet because it was actually, you know, during the week at, you know, 1 p.m. or whatever. Okay, this is looking so much better than the first time I did it. It's not pilling up. So I think I just put on too many products like all at once without really like waiting. It was like earlier in the morning. Definitely needed two layers, but it definitely looks more even and covered and I'm digging it. I am digging it, right? What do you guys think? I feel like it made my skin look pretty healthy. The shade, by the way, if you're typically near my shade, I am Calico. That worked, honestly, that might be a per perfect shade match. It's not like too yellow. It's really hard to find ones that aren't too yellow for me. I'm gonna throw on the Revolution Conceal and Hydrate. We took him to the vet and he, the doctor, his normal doctor, who we love. It's one of those like vet places that you love so much when you finally stumble upon one you love, that I'm like, even if we moved an hour away, I would still use this vet. Like I would drive that far. Anyway, so we took him there and the doctor basically just said, you know what, he kind of did some, you know, hand tests on him to see where he would react. And it seemed to be, we knew it was his back left leg. It seemed to be that it was his knee. So he checked his back and he was like, I'm not noticing any reaction in his back. You know what I mean? I don't think it's anything like that. I think it's localized to the knee. And basically he described it as basically the equivalent of like a torn ACL and a human, whatever that would be for a dog. I don't remember what he said. So that was, you know, kind of what we expected that it was some kind of just injury. Hopefully it wasn't any sort of disease. So he's going to get an x-ray. We will have already known the results by the time you're seeing this, but we're getting him an x-ray here in a couple days. But he basically said, take him home, make him rest. Don't go on any walks or anything. If you can lift him up and down stairs and up and onto beds or couches, whatever, wherever he would typically lay to avoid stressing that knee out. <laughs> so stressed. And he was like, we'll do the x-ray in a couple days. Cause we were, it's a long story, but we'd already had an appointment for him for something else that coming Monday. So he was like, we'll just do that all in one. So that's good. And then uh, we'll just see how he does with the pain medication. We, he's been taking it at night. He's tolerating it very well. He sleeps all day anyway. I mean, he's just a lazy dog, you know? He seems to be fine. He seems to be like feeling okay, but you can tell he doesn't, he won't do the stairs. Whereas he never used to hesitate. Now he will look at us and wait for us to lift his 45 year old pound, five, what am I saying? 45 pound dog. Anyway, we still just have a lot of questions and not a lot of answers. So we will see, hopefully we'll have answers very soon. Hopefully by the time you're even seeing this, I already know, you know, <laughs> my answers. I don't know, but it's, it's like with dogs and babies, it's so hard because you stress so much about them because they can't communicate. I was just talking to my brother about this cause they just had a newborn and it's just like, it's so hard because you feel so helpless. They can't communicate what's wrong with them when they're in pain other than like for a baby crying, for a dog whimpering laying in weird spots in the house, you know, whatever. So it, it just is so hard with parents. And you know, when it rains, it pours. My brother, I hope he doesn't mind me telling this. I'll probably double check with him that he's cool with me sharing this, but they literally had their baby. And the second they got home, and I mean the same day they got home from the hospital, their doggy like needed surgery. Like they had to rush her to the ER and she did need surgery and it was just, so then they're suddenly not just dealing with a newborn, they're freaking dealing with a poor doggy that just had surgery that needs all these medications and has to be carried around, you know, on top of, you know, the sleepless nights of like having a newborn at home and figuring that out. So I, I kept telling them, I'm like, if you guys can survive that, all of that together at the same time, you can literally do anything. You can do anything because that is abnormally hard to be doing two very difficult things all at the same time. Like that's just insane. But that's what I mean. It's just funny. I'm like, of course we're doing a month. And if we end up like, if he ends up needing to have surgery for something, I'm like, why is this happening? Like this just happened to them. It's just so, so bizarre. The timing is so weird, but I fully believe that everything happens for a reason in life. And you know, sometimes you don't know what that reason is for a long time. We'll see, who knows. That was the Benefit Gimme Brow, by the way, which I hadn't pulled out in a while because I always use the e.l.f. one, but that's still still good. Yeah, I really am liking the way this foundation looks. Time will tell and I'll update you guys in the future, but I do feel like it looks really nice for like an everyday, like nice skin look. So I've talked about this in a couple of videos, but in case this is the one of mine you're catching and you hadn't seen those, updates on the baby. She is still, as of taping, she's still breech. So again, kind of like what I was saying, everything happens for a reason. I've read so many stories about people that were like, I was so stressed that my baby was breech and you know, this, that, and the other, but 
in the end, when I had the C-section, because I couldn't give birth to her the other way, in the end, we discovered that her umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck like twice and it wouldn't have, it would never have worked anyway, or that's why she couldn't flip, or that, there's so many different things that can be going on and babies are gonna do, this is what my doctor says, babies are gonna do what babies are gonna do. You can only control so much. So we're at the point where if she doesn't flip by, what did my doctor say, 36 weeks, we'll check. And actually it's like 36 and a half weeks that I'm actually seeing her. And we're having an ultrasound. And if she is still upright, they will schedule a time for me to come back a few days later and she will manually from the outside try to flip her. And that's a, I mean, it's a thing people do. It's a very common thing. It's more dramatic than I think I realized. Our office is connected to an actual like hospital where I would eventually give birth. And it would literally be that I go into the hospital, like check in, they hook me all up. That way we're in the right spot if something goes wrong and they need to do like an emergency C-section because things can happen. There are risks to it that I'm in the right spot and they can do it right away. So I'm like, <laughs> so, and of course it's up to me if I want her to attempt it. I could just say, you know what, let's just ride this out. And if she's breech at whatever weeks, then we can just do the C-section, you know? And the other reality is there are risks with C-sections. There's <laughs> risks with vaginal births too. And so many people I know have had a C-section and had a great experience. Like with my best friend, she's like, next baby, I'm probably doing a C-section again. Like people have had great experiences because of how amazing modern medicine is today. So it's funny, I'm not actually scared of a C-section. I think it's just that I know what to expect with, of course, who knows, but I know what to expect with, with the other kind of birth. And so doing yet another unknown, I was ready like mentally for that, but anything can happen, who knows. But that's kind of the update on that. We'll see, we'll just see what actually ends up happening because so much can happen in a few weeks. And I've also read a lot of stories of people saying, you know, I was doing all these things cause I've done all these spinning babies moves and I'm seeing a chiropractor that this, that and the other. And at the end of the day, the baby just flipped when she wanted to, you know what I mean? Like towards the end, so you never know. And it could also be that <laughs> the baby flips or like even if like the with the doctor thing if she manually flips the baby she could flip back like before we actually go into like labor or whatever later on down the road so that's what's so wild like my doctor says you can only control so much because a baby's gonna do what a baby wants to do i'm gonna throw on this was the nars translucent crystal powder i still don't really know i like it i've been using it but i don't know that it's like a favorite i like it well enough but like if i ran out i don't know that i would need to it again and then the eyeshadow i was using is the essence nothing compares to nude i just i really like just using this shadow here just in the crease it's really easy maybe i'll throw a little shimmer jazz things up a bit <laughs> it's just my normal look you guys so those are the haps there miss genevieve my three-year-old is thriving in preschool she's enjoying it and that's such a turn so i'm there's not much to report there i'm just so relieved it's just hard that kind of a transition. It's hard for her, it's hard for the parents. A lot of people asking if we're gonna share the name of the baby. Of course, yes, we will. After she's born, obviously. <laughs> we totally will. I don't see why not. We love her name so much, you guys. It's funny, part of the name, well, I don't wanna reveal that. That might give it away too much. But we are just so excited about the name. I just, it's one that once it hit both of us, like what we wanted it to be, we were just like, that's it. Like it, it just, it all clicked and it took us a while to get there. I feel like, and maybe it took us this long with Genevieve's name too. But the name we have, the hardest thing for us, the name we've chosen was like, okay, what do we want her nickname to be though? Like it's not a super long name, but it's a little bit longer and it's not one that has an obvious nickname with it. And even with Genevieve, I don't know that Gigi is a very common nickname for Genevieve anyway. We just loved the name. We'll see. We have one nickname in mind that I think would work. That'd be really cute. And I remember <laughs> Tyler was telling me we, we were pretty sure on the name. And he was like, I just don't know because I can't think of a nickname. And then I told him what I thought it should be. And he was like, that's it. I'm sold. That's what I needed to hear. I'm like, all right. And it, it's a cute nickname too. So we'll see if it sticks and you know, but we're very excited about the name. And I don't think, I have not rewatched our old video, but I don't think it was a name that in that old video we did of like baby names we like but aren't using from the first time around. I don't think it's one that we even named on that. I know a lot of you guys have guesses. Boy, do our families, family members, they all have their guesses. No one's been right so far. I wouldn't tell them if they were right anyway. <laughs> it's way more fun this way. Plus my thing is the reason we don't share the name ahead of time, even with family, is that 
I don't want to know their opinion on it. We know how much we love this name and you know, little off offhand comments that someone might make, even if they're not, you know, with ill will, can affect the way you think about the name and then you start doubting it. And it's like, no, this is our kid and we know this is what we'd like to name her for this reason, that reason, whatever. And you know what I mean? I just don't want any anyone to taint it. And then once she's named and we're sharing the name with them, usually they'll keep their thoughts to themselves because they don't think, you know, at that point they're not gonna sway us. Whereas I feel like if I told someone ahead of time in our lives, they might try to sway me one way or the, the other. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, have you thought about this name? You know, you know what I mean? We're like, nope, we're good. We got the name, thank you. <laughs> we're lucky though. I feel like we don't really have family that's so pressury like that. You know what I mean? We really don't. So it would probably be fine either way, but it's just more fun to keep things close to the vest, you know? Builds up the <laughs> suspense. Oh, that was another new uh, drugstore product. So what have we tried? So the new number seven, and then this one is the Milani highly rated anti-gravity mascara. This was the third time I've used it. It freaking curls right away. It really does. So you can kind of see, I mean, that didn't take long and it really just like, Whoa. so if that's what you're looking for, a curl, you might really like this. It's a wet formula and it's got one of those brushes that's like a little flimsy. I don't typically like, but it doesn't really bother me too much with this and it looks really nice. So I'm gonna throw on the Maybelline City Bronzer. And some of you guys had sent questions recently in some DMs. I was just kind of looking because there were a few that I was like, ooh, I need to talk about that on my channel. Do I use filters on my YouTube videos? No, y'all can see. Are you kidding me? You guys can see every little crevice on my face, especially this is my vlogging camera. And this one has like a smoothing filter. And I accidentally, I think it was like when I first opened it, I didn't even know the setting was on. Like it was, I'm not, I'm not good with cameras, you guys. In that one video, I literally had to put a thing on the screen and I was like, y'all, this looks crazy. Because it would smooth some things, but then like other things would, it looked wild. I was like, okay, never again. Like it didn't even look good. It looked crazy. So on my vlog camera, that's just turned off. But sometimes because this isn't as high quality as my like, sit down video, this is a sit down video, but like over at our workspace that I have, that one is like true, true 4K and you see every little, <laughs> so no, I don't have a filter. <laughs> I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> Other than like if it was like a skin smoothing one on the camera, but no, no, you'd, you'd be able to tell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a good bronzer. It's one I forget about, but it really is so good. The Maybelline City Bronzer. And this is still one of my favorite brushes for powder bronzer. It's the Eco Tools. I think it's technically their blush brush, but it's one that I honestly reach for <laughs> for bronzer more than I do blush. Just because it's a good size for it. It's not too big. That was a question I did not expect to see. That's that's just funny. I remember being asked that a while ago, and that was when I had a crappier camera. I'm like, no, it's blurry because it's a crappy camera. <laughs> What foundation or foundation powder do you recommend for dry aging skin? My favorite is the L'Oreal Age Perfect one. It's like their creamy, it's in a white packaging. It's their creamy powder foundation and I love it so much, so much. And I really do feel like it's one of the better ones for more mature skin. Cause that's what it's, I mean, that's what it's geared towards. So that is definitely a favorite and what I'd recommend. What content gets you the most views? It's been slowly shifting on my channel. I have noticed recently, but generally, drugstore makeup content gets me the most views, which I mean, think about it, that would kind of make sense considering A, who doesn't want to save money? Like that's more common than it is to want to spend a lot of money or to be able to spend a lot of money. So it makes sense that that would be the thing that would like garner more views. Definitely like drugstore dupes especially, which that's, I was gonna say that's why I do them. Of course it is. I mean, I want, I'm a YouTube creator. Why wouldn't I want to make videos more people want to watch, right? But I freaking love the hunt, man. I love the chase of trying to find drugstore dupes. Like it is genuinely a joy filled activity <laughs> for me. <laughs> Cause there's nothing better than being like, holy crap, this is as good if not better than this freaking $40 foundation or whatever. Speaking of good drugstore freaking products, this is a favorite and I just re-pulled it out. The Milani Cheek Kiss Liquid Freaking Blush. Y'all just saw me apply that, it was so, Easy, so, so easy. I have it in 110 Nude Flush. Highly recommend, it just, so pretty. But a lot of the content, like my vlogs and stuff, 
a lot more of you guys are watching, which excites me because I love doing vlogs. This would never be just a vlog channel, I can tell you that, because I like doing sit down videos too. But I really genuinely enjoy doing vlogs. And so the fact that so many more of you guys are enjoying them the past year makes me so excited. And when I look at like the view count of my videos, I know certain ones that won't do as well. Like if I do a pregnancy specific video, I know instantly it's gonna get probably less than half the views of a normal video of mine because I know that most of the people that watch me are not necessarily here for pregnancy content. They're here for makeup or vlogs or whatever reason you're here. But sometimes those videos are so much fun for me to do. And I know like if I've got valuable things to share about, I wanna share them even knowing that that video might not do as well. And that's okay. Let me use the milk makeup. I can never decide if I wanna keep this or not, but I used this the other day and I was like, it looked so pretty and I was like, okay, why do I not use this? It's the Milk Makeup Flex Highlighter. It's really pretty. Anyway, so those are the ones. That's why, you know, I do drugstore content because I enjoy it, but also I know you guys enjoy it. I've gotten back into the habit. A lot of you guys are like, oh girl, you got that pregnancy glow. I'm like, I don't know, man. I've seen my skin without makeup. I'm not sure that I do, but <laughs> I've gotten back into the habit of, I used to, like I always put highlighter like here and here and stuff, but I got back into the habit of putting it on my nose and like right here, ab like right above this part of the brow. And the second I started doing that, a lot of you guys started commenting on my glow I'm like it was the highlighter baby so hey if you want that pregnancy glow without being pregnant put highlighter right here and right there you're welcome but yeah this highlighter really is pretty biggest ways you've changed from five and ten years ago you guys I had this thought for a video and let me know if it'd be weird maybe it would just be weird and I shouldn't do it because it would be weird like I said, I said that enough I thought it'd be kind of interesting to share the trajectory of my life like what big things like in order have happened in my life that have kind of took me, taken me to where I'm at at the age of 33. I mean, there'd be no reason for it other than like if you just, it's kind of like getting to know me kind of video, but I haven't done anything like that. And I used to talk a lot more about like get to know me videos, but it's been years. And so many of you guys have discovered me in the past few years and you don't know how Tyler and I met and you don't know what my other interests are and what I was like as a kid and what was I like as a kid. <laughs> Let me know if you'd be interested in that. I don't know. I'd have to really think about that, but I thought that could just be a fun single video topic, just getting ready and talking about my life and like getting to know me, sharing about that kind of thing. Maybe it'd be weird. Let me know. I've also gotten questions about like, why don't you show more of your family and friends on your channel, like in vlogs? Every once in a while we'll show like family or friends. We don't because the... I don't feel like it's fair, especially, I mean, I, we would always ask them like, hey, do you, are you guys cool being in a vlog? Are you, you know, but I don't think it's fair. Like this is a, a, what we have chosen to do. You know what I mean? I choose to be on YouTube and to put things about my life on YouTube, but that doesn't mean that my sister wants to do that. And that doesn't mean that my niece and nephew, who really, I, I typically just don't show any of like my family's kids or anything because that's not, that's not my kid. That's not my place. Yeah, it's just been kind of a conscious choice we've made. I feel like long, long ago, early on in my channel, I showed more of my family like at family gatherings and I don't do that anymore for all the reasons I said. It's, it's not really up to me and I don't think that's right and that's all. And it's not like, I feel like one time I got a question like, someone asked like, do they know that you have a channel? I was like, yeah. <laughs> This is, this is a big part of my life, you guys. Yeah, they know. Anyway, that's that's really why there's no weird reason. It's just that, you know, what I said. <laughs> oh, but how, how have I changed from five and 10 years ago? I will say this. I will cringe when I watch videos of mine from before I had Genevieve. And even shortly after, I changed so much. I don't wanna say my personality, but I changed and matured fast and so much after having a baby. And I don't know if that was the having of the baby or just literally the age I was at, like turning 30, turning 31. Maybe it was more to do with just the age. Regardless, I feel like I have grown up so much. <laughs> no, but like watching me in videos, I just, I could sense that I was always scared to say the wrong thing. And there's still that healthy fear of that. I mean, we live in 2022, baby. You can get canceled for things that 50% of the world or 50% of the population would cancel you for and 50% of the population would revere you for. What a weird world we're living in. And that's from both sides. And I've already talked about, I'll link the video where I talk about politics and my, my feelings on that down below. Just being in the middle where you just feel like, uh, anyway, I'll link that video if you wanna watch it. What was I talking about? <laughs> I just feel like I could sense in those older videos that I would hold back so much and that I didn't want to say the wrong thing. And then just that I was also a little immature. I was just a little bit younger. So some of the things I would say, I'm like, oh, 
I can't even like think of examples. It was nothing like bad. It was just more like awkward or mm, 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 mm. I just am very different and I feel so much more comfortable in front of the camera chatting with you guys. I feel like you're genuinely like in the room with me versus then I think maybe it was that my perspective on what I did on YouTube was different. And now I'm viewing it more as like, you know what? Most of you guys are watching my videos. Okay, here's what it is. It just hit me. I used to think that like people were only watching my videos to learn about makeup, to think about what to buy, etc. Now there is a healthy amount of people that that is why they're watching. Like, especially if you're stumbling on my channel for one video and you're watching my dupes video, you're probably watching that because you genuinely are like, I really want to find a dupe for this product. So that's like educational, if you will. But I think I've realized in recent years that a lot more of us and myself included as a YouTube watcher are watching YouTube really as entertainment and just like to have a buddy around. Like I have told Tyler a million times, I watch a lot of YouTube, probably the same way many of you guys do. And like, instead of putting on Hulu and Netflix, a lot of times if I'm folding laundry, I'm watching a YouTube video. I've got a YouTube video up and I would say most of the time, I'm not even like sitting and watching the video. I'm doing something else and I just have my buddies on in the background. You know what I mean? It's more of a comfort thing to me and it's still entertainment, but I'm not necessarily watching these videos trying to learn about a lot of new makeup. I kind of am, there's a percentage, but I guess my point is I've realized that my job here on YouTube is not just to inform, but it, it's also might just be to hang out with you guys, to entertain you, to comfort you, whatever that might be. So I think having that shift in my perspective has changed a lot of the ways that I talk in videos. Some of the videos that I do, I do way more chatty videos than I used to because I know that a lot of you guys are watching me for that reason, just to hang out and chat. And quite frankly, I really enjoy these videos. I like hanging out and chatting. So that's why you've seen more of those and more vlogs because, well, because I enjoy doing it, but hopefully a lot of you guys are too. So that's some of the ways I've changed. <laughs> I'm sure I could name a million more. Let's do one more topic that I've gotten in some DMs. Would you ever do a project pan? No. <laughs> I've always toggled with that idea, but no, because of what I do and how I try. There are certain things I do hit pan on, use up, repurchase, whatever. But given what I do and like share about makeups and reviews, I probably won't. Like there will always be a few products that I'm like, oh, I'm so close to finishing. Like this is so exciting and I'll kind of try to use it up. But that's more of just on my own. But doing those videos, I never really got into them when they were super, and they're still popular, but I never really got into it when it was super popular and it's just never been my speed. It's funny though, I do a lot of declutters and not a, not every YouTuber like does declutters. And I feel like there's so many different like worlds. Like there's the Project Pan community, there's the decluttering community, there's the giant redonkulous makeup collection video, there's the, <laughs> it's just so interesting. And some of us, you know, have our toes in a few of them, but I feel like the decluttering community and the Project Panning community, sometimes like they're one and the same, right? But I never got into that other side of it, the project panning. So no, that's probably not something you will see on my channel. I understand why people like it though. And I, I mean, I, I get it. And I, it's necessary for some people, but I just love trying new makeup and I can't, <laughs> I just can't pigeonhole myself into only using up some products. The reality is I still do use up a lot of makeup. Like my favorites, I go through and use them up anyway. So anyway, that is everything. I hope this was fun just to chat and get ready together. <laughs> I do these about once a month. So if you wanna check out some of my previous months, coffee chat, get ready with me's, I will link the playlist right down below and up in the eye if you want to binge watch some of them and my battery's about to die. Perfect timing, beautiful. Anyway, I love you guys. I hope you subscribe and stick around, catch some more of my videos and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.